So now in this video, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. I'll take it apart and rebuild it step-by-step -step for you. And ultimately, when you see these circuits, this is called an A-stable multi-vibrator circuit, by the way. The A-stable means there's no stable condition. As you can see, the LEDs just keep going back and forth, on and off, and it never stabilizes. As long as we apply power to this circuit, these LEDs are always going to flash like this. That's what makes it unstable. And typically, when you get the schematic form, it'll look something really close to this. But down here, I drew a version. This is basically how I have it set up on the board here. As you can see, we got uh, two resistors on each side, and then the ground on each side as you can see there so if you're having trouble transferring this schematic to the breadboard this one may help you so now to begin with we will start with the transistors so we're using the 2N2222 NPN type transistor there's also an A after it but that doesn't matter for us we're just uh, concerned about the 2N22 22 and as you can see here the flat side of both of them are to the right and so the pin layouts for them as you can see here the when you're looking at the flat side the left one's the emitter that's when it comes to the schematic diagram that'll be the one with the arrow that's the left one the middle pin is the base that's uh, this side of the transistor on the schematic symbol it doesn't matter whether the symbols facing right or left that that doesn't matter just the middle one is the base that middle pin connection and then the one here on the right is the collector but we'll be turning it this way so that now the emitter is on the bottom the base is in the middle and the collector is on top here and all we have to do for now is connect the emitter to ground and that's the negative rail and we can do that on both sides. By the way, I already turned the power supply off. You should always turn the power supply off when you're modifying your circuit. But uh, this power supply will power both rails. And also, you can start positive over here, work your way to negative over there, or vice versa, with no problems. So now, we're going to move along to the capacitor. So, the capacitor is really the most confusing part of this schematic diagram but uh, you can't really put them sideways on the breadboard like that that's why I did this backup capacitor uh, backup schematic but just realize that when you look at these schematics they'll be in this form so you gotta figure out how to do this yourself but uh, what I just did I redrew it because ultimately these capacitors are gonna have to be up and down on the board we can't really cross them very well. The wires won't touch and stuff. And uh, so I just drew it this way. Hopefully it's easier to follow. So these are polarized capacitors. At a certain point in capacitance, uh, when you go higher than a certain capacitance, it's probably going to be a polarized capacitor. If you're lower, it's probably going to be a non-polarized capacitor. But what that means is, is that when we charge this, this side always has to be more positive. This side always has to be more negative. So if you haven't trimmed the leads, you'll usually have longer lead on the positive side. And then there's these gray dashes right there and a little dash to indicate negative arrows pointing down to this lead. And it's the shorter lead if you haven't trimmed it. So for our circuit, positive is going to be down and it connects to the collector. So this is what's called a node at this point there's three components connected to each other conductively so basically that means a row right there and so we connect the positive side of the capacitor to the top pin because remember up here that's the collector at the top and the schematic the collector is the side without the arrow and so we will put the long lead there short lead up here we're leaving a space here for where the wires cross so we want to make sure we do that and now we'll do the same thing with this one because these are basically parallel circuits and uh, I'm doing this while I'm 
looking through the camera. So trying to make sure. I got him on the same row. Looks like we did pretty good. No, I'm way off. There we go. That was one row off. So now we're at the collector for both of those. And while we're here, as I said, this is a node. The three components are connected, so we also have the LED. So if you haven't trimmed the leads, the short lead of the LED should be the cathode, the long lead, the anode. There's also a flat edge on the cathode, but uh, this camera won't pick that up the, the way that we have it now. I need uh, something to zoom in a little closer, but uh, short lead, the cathode is connected to the collector, and same with, uh, with this LED. And as I said, that's also where the positive side of the capacitor is connected. And so, you can see that they're parallel here in this diagram. It's a little harder to see in this diagram. Just be aware this is where that node is, right there. So we got the collector of the transistor, same as on this side, positive side of the capacitor, and the cathode, the short lead of the LED, all connected in one spot. So now we come to a tricky part of the circuit, at least for me, and that's where we cross the circuits there and because ultimately they're just two separate parallel circuits other than this connection uh, between them so I just grabbed these jumper wires and I didn't have jumper wires the first time I built this circuit so I just made uh, made one and then used uh, one like this to go across but we put the negative side of the capacitors to the base of the opposing transistor not the one down there and the base of course is the middle pin and the thing to remember with the base of transistors that's how you control how much the collector to emitter is conducting as you'll see the uh, collector side of the circuit will be more positive the emitter will be more negative so there will be current flow but only when a small current is applied to the base a uh, low voltage and a small current that will allow current to flow from collector to emitter and so one side of the circuit is controlling the other side and vice versa and so we just connect the jumper directly to the row of the negative side of the capacitor to the base of the transistor so now this node again this is a node we have the negative side of the capacitor to the base of that transistor and then we'll be adding a resistor as you can see here if uh, you like this diagram better you can see it there we got the wire going across the negative side of the capacitor and a resistor going there so we have to make sure we finish up that node or else the circuit won't work of course so now we finish this up we got everything worked up to there all we have left are the resistors and to make things easy I got these packets from a kit that I got a long time ago and they have the values of the resistors written on them a lot of times the package isn't uh, labeled but the paper strip is a lot of times they write the value on the paper strips of course you could use a multimeter to make those measurements but uh, in any case we have lower value resistors across the LEDs and a lot of these schematic diagrams for the A-stable multivibrator won't have LEDs included in them. That's extra in this circuit. It's not part of the basic circuit. Sometimes you just want the voltage and uh, the current available there. But in this case, we're using LEDs. So, I still uh, I have the resistors here. And the 220 is uh, red, red, brown. And uh, the two bottom ones here are red red brown and they go to the LEDs the higher value ones 27 kilo ohms they go to where the negative side of the capacitor is and also the wire that jumps across there but first we'll do the LEDs and I kinda made it easier to see here you can see we jump across to the positive rails on all four sides so first we'll do this LED 
with the 220 ohm resistor. So this is going to the anode, the longer lead of the LED. And then uh, down here we have the other resistor. And then again, we have uh, 27 kilo ohms from the positive side to the negative side of the capacitor and to the base of the transistor over there and we can compare the color from there to these you can see looks like it's uh, uh, red black red I think but uh, in any case we just put them to the negative side of the capacitor and the wire across to the transistor so now we're in the same row again these all these resistors are to the positive side of the power supply and uh, this is a 5 volt power supply so we got 5 volts on one side we consider this 0 volts so there's a 5 volt difference between these two points and of course same thing here this is a connected area this is all negative these are all connected areas too but uh, the 5 volt difference between these and ground and so we got one resistor there we'll put the other resistor positive to the uh, negative side of the capacitor which also goes to the transistor and now when we turn the power on you can see that we have an a stable multivibrator circuit they're flashing back and forth so now of course we have the uh, negative side of the capacitor that heads to through this resistor to oops through that resistor to the positive rail so you may be worried that uh, maybe the capacitor will get the wrong charge at some point of course that's a good reason when you're done building these circuits to grab the multimeter set it to measure voltage and then uh, see if I can get that at a good angle and you put the red probe to the positive side of the capacitor and the black probe to the negative side a hard time seeing there and I uh, take a voltage measurement and as you can see the voltage is changing it's changing a lot faster than the meter can get an accurate reading but you can see that we're always in the positive range so we know that this capacitor is uh, never getting a reverse charge so we're safe so now I never got around to it uh, I meant to but uh, I wanted to talk about the capacitor a little bit I got the uh, 47 microfarad capacitor out of this kit and you can see here it goes from 47 microfarad to 470 microfarad so I don't have much choice in that range it jumps tenfold uh, between those two values I could have found a different capacitor uh, most in other kits and stuff most other schematic diagrams I had I see they have like a hundred 220 microfarad for the capacitors here some of them have uh, different values and uh, the smaller the value the faster the circuits gonna go but you can compensate that by uh, increasing the resistance of uh, these two resistors here and uh, ultimately that's what I did which is why I think we have this nice pace right here for its oscillations so unfortunately I, I'm guessing you're probably going to have a hard time finding a 47 microfarad uh, capacitor and uh, so you'll just have to use whatever capacitor you can find and adjust these resistors until you get a pace that you like.